mention of your name, King of majesty. There is no power in hell, nor any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. Lift your voices. Great I am. Father, you are the great I am. And Lord, today as we come into your house, God, I ask that from your your throne room today, from, from heaven to our heart, that God, we would hear clearly the word of the Lord in our lives today. There is not a more important message than the one we will hear today because it is for your people. And so God, I pray that we would just be alive with the sense that you want to do something miraculous in our lives today in our midst, in these moments together. God, we pray your grace and your power over this whole service. We believe it. We agree together in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. All right. Now, before you are seated, I want to challenge you to do something. If I look out most weeks, you tend to sit in the same places, right? And not only do you sit in the same places, but you kind of sit in the same little core of bubble of about 10 to 15 people. Today, I'm going to challenge you to meet somebody from the other side of the tracks, all right? I want you to meet someone from over there and someone back there and someone over there. So in other words, I'm going to give you a couple extra minutes to meet new folks, say hi, shake a hand, hug a neck, and we will go from there with some video announcements in just a moment. Morning, bro. Good morning. Okay, I got to tell you something. I've just been utterly uh, shocked and awed. You actually listened. I can't believe it. Some of you, that is more exercise than you're going to get in the whole week. Look at you. That was awesome. Thank you very, very much. All right. Let me talk to you about giving this morning. As followers of Christ, the true goal of giving and and doing good works is not to draw attention to ourselves but it's to bring glory to God. Jesus said this in, in, in what is perhaps one of the most important passages of Scripture. Uh, we kind of entitle it uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and, and it says this out of Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way. Let your light shine, let your light shine 
before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, this sometimes confuses folks in regards to giving. Now, when I, what Jesus is not saying here is that your giving should be showy or it should be done so others commend you. In fact, there's other places in Scripture, actually in the same body of work, the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus talks about where our giving should be done in secret and that he is the one that rewards us for heart giving. So what does this mean here? How do we let our light shine and yet then we're supposed to keep something in secret? Well, the two concepts come together very, very well in the role of the church where the glory of God is meant to both shine and be seen by others. You see, we give in secret in the church. Now, I know it's not totally secret, but, you know, we pass the buckets here in a moment, but many put in envelopes, and then that's discreet, and in other words, that's secret. And so we give our tithes and offerings by putting that into the bucket in just a moment, and, and we don't necessarily all run out and thank you individually for doing that. That's something that we do And we've come to accept that this is unto the Lord. We don't need the praise of men. But because each one of us is faithful in giving to the church, the church in turn then collectively takes all that and is is allowed to use that for good works. We're allowed to use that, in other words, for ministry. We get to provide counseling to those that just are hurting. We are allowed to to come alongside in something that you're going to hear about in just a moment with grief share. Um, we, we can run programs for youth and children or outreaches to those that are, that are lost. And, and of course, we can have a time where, like in these moments where we get to lift the name of Jesus. So we as individuals, we, we do good works. We give our gifts to God privately for the commendation of the Lord only. But together, collectively, as the body of Christ, we are able to let everyone in this community know and see that collectively, We are doing that which he has called us to do. So friends, as we continue to give to the church, we continue to do good. We continue to do good works. But every time we do it, we have the opportunity to glorify the Lord in heaven. And that is a fantastic thing. So if you're at the end of the aisle, if you'd reach down, hold that bucket for just a moment. And we are going to pray and we're going to receive our morning tithe and offering. All right. Lord, I thank you today for the opportunity to come together and do good together. Collectively, we do in secret, we do our part, we do that which you've called us to do, we move in obedience and we give. And we give to tithes and offerings and to to our ruined partners around the world and and we're a part of that. And Lord, as we are able to do that then as a church, our, our opportunity is to uh, allow people to see, not so they can say, man, SJA is great, but they can say, man, God is doing something neat, doing something powerful in that, in that church, his place. And God, I pray today that your testimony would continue to pour out of this place. And that, Lord, that the goodness of God would be evident. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be a part of that. We pray this, we believe this in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. All right, we're going to pass that along the aisle. We've got an usher will be there to pick it up, and we've got some video announcements along with a grief share video for you to see this morning. God bless you. April with this week's updates. The Thrive College Connect group meets every Thursday at the Starbucks on Ramona Expressway and State at 9 p.m. If you would like more information about this group, mark your connection and Kaylee Barnes will contact you. Laugh meets for breakfast at Cafe on the Green this Monday, February 24th at 9 a.m. 100 children's fire Bibles are here and ready to be reinforced with contact paper. So join us Tuesday, March 4th at 6.30 p.m. for a wrapping party. For more information, see Donna Johnson, our Kids Ministry Director, following service. The alley closure is progressing. Be aware, Estadio Street will now be a two-way street. Please use extra caution while adapting to this new change in traffic. Lastly, get ready to spring forward. Daylight savings time starts on March 9th. So remember to set your clocks forward. 
there are many other important announcements, so check your connection and take this time to silence your cell phones. Thank you, church, and have a blessed day. Heaviness just came over me where I just started weeping uncontrollably. It's like your whole world fell apart. It seemed like my, my God put the pause button on in my life. One day, someone you love will die. When this happens, you'll likely experience more pain than you've ever imagined. I'm Zig Ziglar. Burying my daughter was painful, and it taught me this. When you're grieving, it's not the time to be strong. It's the time to be human. That's why I needed people who would listen to me, care for me, and point me to the comfort that only God offers. And if you or someone you know is grieving, you need the same. That's why there's Grief Share. Grief Share is a Christ-centered, video-based, small group designed to help you along your journey of grief. At each Grief Share session, you'll hear from people who've lost loved ones. They'll share what they did to heal from their grief. The best thing I can tell you is to lean into it. Just take it like waves of an ocean. Don't try to run from it. Don't try to numb it. Don't try to pretend it isn't so. Also, each session contains excerpts from interviews with leading experts on grief recovery, many of whom have been touched by grief. I think the people around us don't understand grief unless they've been through it themselves. And Christ wept before the tomb of a dear friend. And in so doing, pictured for us that it's not wrong to grieve. If someone you know is grieving the death of a loved one, let him or her know about grief share. And keep in mind that even if that person's grief isn't fresh, participating in a grief share group will benefit him or her. And if you've recently lost someone, you should consider coming out to a grief share group. Make a commitment to attend at least three sessions and then decide if Grief Share is right for you. Remember, the journey from mourning to joy shouldn't be walked alone. That's why there's Grief Share. To learn more about Grief Share, log on to www.griefshare.org. All right, very, very serious uh, subject matter, but folks, there is hope that comes from the Lord in this. And I, I look around this room and I, I know many of you have uh, walked through some very difficult circumstances in the last few years. And Grief Share absolutely is for you. And so you can see Leo and Melody out today in the gazebo and they'll give you more information in that regard. But um, I just want to make sure you know about that and uh, make yourself available to that. You also can check your connection card in that. And I appreciate. And again, I don't know if you caught it, but Estadio is now a two-way street. Some of you are going to wander off the curb tomorrow or today and wonder why someone's coming the other direction at you, all right? So just want you to be, be cautious and careful. And we are, that's phase one of getting our alley closed. And we are in the bid process of, uh, of getting that all shut down so our kids can move safely between the buildings and everything else without any traffic and everything else. And so we are looking forward to that. And I want to thank uh, Randy Construction for getting that going for us over here on this side, and, uh, and away we go. All right, today I want to continue in our series on the Holy Spirit, and I want to talk to you about miracles. Now, our, our, our society is, is fascinated be, about the idea of, of miracles, and our understanding of the word goes from the miraculous to the spectacular. In fact, the word is often used in great exaggeration within the English language, or, or we use it in a way that it may be it sounds appropriate, but we're really trying to build an emphasis on how great a moment was. We say stuff like this. It was a miracle that we passed the test. How many of you as students have said something very similar to that? Or, or it was a miracle that she married me. 
Well, that's true in my case. I, don't, I think God blinded her eyes, and, uh, and I'm very thankful for that. Others are, are you know, the, it's a miracle I got here in time. You get, you get what I'm saying? There's even one company that calls their product Miracle Whip, right? And, and I think that we would have a better idea of what God's miracles are if we would actually understand some of the classifications of miracles. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you about miracles today is because some people doubt their existence. And Vern, I forgot about you. You, you got here early and I saw you. And uh, so this is a great segue because you're going to talk about a miracle here in just a moment, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Grab that mic right there. I got all excited because, you know, it's a miracle that I caught this. Uh, you see where I'm going? And uh, last week we had a, we had a I'll, I'll, I'll get that going for you, bud. Uh, we had a, a short-term mission trip head off to Ranchos de Sus Niños. And uh, Vern uh, was one of, come on up here, bud. Don't stand down there. And uh, Vern was one of those that participated. We had a wide spectrum of individuals, young, old, red, yellow, black, and white, and everything in between. And... Um, you guys did ministry for a few days, and why don't you tell us right, about yeah. that? And, uh, they, they noticed that, too, and they, and they commented. Uh, one night, we were all sitting around the campfire singing songs and stuff, and, and uh, some, some of the people from, from the, uh, uh, the, the orphanage there that, that lived there, worked there, ministered there, they were looking at us. They go, There's, you're so diversified, but you all love each other, and you all get along so well. It's good. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, we come from a very diversified. Uh, How many of you know that heaven will look uh, very diverse, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, when this trip came up, I really jumped on it because I was just anxious to, to get to another uh, mission trip. I hadn't been to a, on a mission trip since uh, the last, last millennium. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I, I came expecting God to uh, excuse me, God to use us, and, and this, I wanted to see uh, what God would do. And uh, we got there late Friday night, and that was quite an adventure, getting, just getting to the campus. Uh, we got to the campus, settled into our dorms, and next morning we got up and did a little work project, and then we were supposed to get a tour and meet the kids and all that. And after lunch, they said, oh, guess what? Your uh, itinerary, itinerary changed. So you're going to go out and do the water ministry this afternoon. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. I don't know why that happened, what's going on, but all right, fine. So the water ministry, this is what they do. They, they have this huge water truck that holds like 2,000 gallons of water. And they go out into these poor neighborhoods. I'm talking poor. You don't see anything this poor in the United States. These people are living in shacks that they built from scraps. They have no running water, uh, no facilities of any kind. They have these, like, 55-gallon drums that they have to get filled somehow. And sometimes they have to pay for it. But this ministry goes out and gives them this water for free. They go out and they say, do you need water and do you need prayer? And when we got to the neighborhood uh, that we were going to minister to, um, I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, and, and these people are just so grateful for anything. And these people are all depending on God in a way that we can't imagine. Right. Um, another ministry had been there just ahead of us that was giving out food. And uh, when we got there, we greeted them. Uh, we prayed for them, sent them on their way. And then we went, started walking through the neighborhood. We prayed for some people. Some people asked for water. We got to this one family. There was a man and his wife and three small children and a baby, uh, barely, barely walking. And uh, yes, absolutely, they wanted prayer and, and they needed water. Um, so we prayed for them um, through uh, an interpreter. The interpreter, he prayed for them too. When we got done praying, the mother just broke out in tears. And so the interpreter asked her, you know, um, you know why, are, why are you crying? And after she told him, he, told, he interpreted for us and said, this morning, we had no water, we had no food. <clears throat> she said, I prayed to God. I said, please, uh, bring us water, bring us food. 
And she says, today, you know, <laughs> before, the, before the day was done, she had food for her children. She had water. She said, it, it's a miracle. And, you know, these, excuse me, these people just need a miracle every day. It was so great to be there, to, to minister, to be used of God, and, and, and to know that, that we were in the center of God's will. And uh, these people over there at, at uh, La Mission, uh, which, is, uh, which is part of the uh, orphanage, uh, which is called Rancho de Sus Niños, they're doing a wonderful work there. They take in people that nobody else will take in. Right. Young children, they grow up there. They also have a, a, a school that, that the community can participate in. Every, everyone in, in the orphanage, they go to that school. They take them completely through, through uh, to the high school. Then, uh, if they're ready to go out into the world, they give them their blessing. If not, they can stay there and, and go to a Bible college. And um, the, this one young lady that was our um, kind of our guide, um, I want to call her Padme because uh, her name sounds like that, but no, that's somebody from Star Wars. Had, 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 had me, I believe her name was. Um, she, she was giving us the tour and showing us, and we got to meet the kids, and they're just wonderful. They're darling. We got to play with them for a couple of hours, and they just soak up, soak up all that attention. And somebody asked, what's your story? And she told us about how she came uh, to be there at the mission. Uh, at the at the orphanage, she grew up there, and after everything that they had done for her, she wanted to give back. So she stayed on That's correct. and became part of the staff. Awesome! And you got a nice shirt out of the deal too. A great shirt, yeah. With a luchador. Look at you. I think that's uh, what's that wrestler? That's a wrestler. I don't Ramsey's, I guess from uh, uh, Nacho Libre. That's Nacho it. That's Libre. Who it is. Yeah. All right, very good. Let's give Vern a hand. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, buddy. You can stick that on the stand for us. <laughs> How many of you have seen Nacho Libre? Ramsey's, he's no dancing. He's no dancing at the pot here, right? Those of you, that's code. You know what that means. And uh, uh, can I have the members of those put that away? Put that away. Do you have, uh, I know, I, I. It was supposed to be in and out. I'm sorry. All right. They this morning. They don't open till 11. Is it fried? No, uh, it's just a sausage. Oh, it's a, a sausage egg McMuffin. You, did you bring enough for everybody? No, I'm enough for you. Thank you very much. I'll heat it up later. All right. In conclusion today, <laughs> since I lost control about 10 minutes ago, and uh, if you weren't here, was it last or a couple weeks ago, I teased her mercilessly for eating in the front row. And uh, so, I'm still glad I did it. And um, uh, who went on that trip last week? Would you stand, please, real quick? Would you, who, who went on the trip? I see some of you here stand up real good and tall. Very good. Some of you aren't here this morning. Very good. You may be seated. Folks, what we do this year in regards to Ruin, we want everyone to touch uh, missions in some way. Everyone is capable in one way or another. And... Uh, we have, uh, one of the ways you've been doing that is with buying, um, you know, uh, harvest oats. And, uh, you know, we only have two bags left. And I think we're going to auction those off next week. And uh, it's just two bags. And now that we've got some of you hooked, you'll pay more for it, you see. And uh, so that we'll be doing that next week. And thanks very much for being a part of that. It's been fantastic. All right. How do I transition back to a message that I started? All right. Okay, there's four There's four. Four things that you need to know about when we talk about miracles. The first one is, it's the contradiction of chaos in the physical world as a miracle. Now, there's a, there's a theological argument out there for the existence of God, and it's called the teleological rationale, which simply means that there is order in the, because there is order in the universe, it proves that there is a God. Now, modern arguments call this, uh, probably you're more familiar with this, the intelligent design theory. And it's, it's like laying a watch on a table or, or anything that's mechanical and saying, what are the chances of this thing just happening? If I leave it here a thousand years, will it become something else? And the answer to that question is, no. 
it will still be a watch, even though people may not recognize what it is. And folks, we get to see what God does in the physical world all the time. Uh, I don't know if you saw the sunset last night. It was one of the most fantastic sunsets I've ever seen. Not only was it beautiful where it was setting, but what it was doing to the mountains out this way was, was just amazing. Or when you hold the child for the very first time, and they are crying in your arms, and you're crying on their face, it's, a, it's just a miraculous moment. It's, it's an amazing moment. Or what I love right now, and I posted about this yesterday, when you stand near an orchard at this time of year, a citrus orchard, and you just take one good breath of that and it fills your lungs, it just you go, this has to be a loving God that does this kind of stuff. This, this type of sweetness, this type of beauty, it just can't be random. It has to be God. The second thing is the contradiction of physical laws by physical resources. In other words, that sometimes God makes smart people. Back a while ago, polio was one of the most destructive and deadly diseases that would just deform and do terrible things into the lives of people. And it had gone on for hundreds and hundreds of years, but in that last century, there was a vaccine that came along and, and was widely um, um, uh, you know, produced and, and, and supplied to areas of need around the world, and it largely eradicated the, uh, that, that disease of polio, and it's largely eradicated today, except for those nations that stopped doing vaccinations, and it's starting to creep back up again, and now we're having a bit of a polio outbreak in parts of the world that have stopped doing this. But what I'm getting at is sometimes God, in, in his infinite wisdom, creates Great people and great people come to wonderful things, and it isn't necessarily, oh, that's a God thing, but it's a thing that God has put in motion, and there we go. Thirdly, there is the contradiction to spiritual laws by spiritual resources. In other words, folks, many of us here today, because of faith in, uh, in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and because we've asked him into our hearts, our trajectory was hell. But because of that confession of faith, you and I have the opportunity to one day to be with him in heaven. Matthew 9, chapter 4 through 8, or uh, yeah, 4 through 8 says this, Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, get up, take your mat, and go home. The man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to men. In other words, sometimes that which is, um, is, is, is God knew in advance that we would need a Savior and then this spiritually by what was done by Christ on the cross changed that spiritual truth and that was a miracle. Your salvation, my salvation, folks, is still the greatest miracle. If you wonder there, if there is... There is um, a miracle that happens, it happens almost every second of the day where someone gives their heart to the Lord. And fourthly, the contradiction of physical laws by spiritual resources. And this is what we most often think about in regards to uh, miracles, where, where God, uh, by way of Jesus here, uh, we see that he turned water into wine. That's a, that's a great kickoff to a miracle, right? And then healing of lepers, and then there was the one with the shriveled hand, and then of course the blind man, and the deaf person, and, and a paralytic, and a woman who, was, who had been continually bleeding and hemorrhaging for years. And, and then there was the multipl multiplication or the multiplying of a small portion of bread and fish, or this McDonald's, whatever it is, right? And, 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 and the feeding of the masses. And then of course there was the walking on the water, and, and the calming of the storms, or one of my favorite pulling money out of a fish, or cursing the fig tree, and then of course, the coup d'etat, raising a dead man to life. Sometimes as we read scripture, we don't always discern the difference between the gift of miracles and the gift of healing. And very simply, only that the gift of healing is, a, only that the gift of healing is a miracle, and the gift of miracles includes miracles other than healing. So, why does God do all this? Well, very simply, he loves you. Very simply, God has always had a plan. God has a purpose. And miracles are used to his end. Now, I understand there are times in our life where things happen and we say something like this, 
God, why didn't you do a miracle? Ever say something like that? Of course you have. And sometimes we just wonder and we're lost, uh, uh, even a loss for words, that why God didn't do something specifically in our point of need. And folks, there, there's not necessarily an easy answer, but there is an understanding that we can come to today. But God absolutely does miracles today, even though he may not always do the miracle the way you absolutely saw it in your mind. God's ways certainly are always higher than our ways, and that's scriptural. But well, why does God do miracles? Number one, he does miracles to defend his holiness. In, Acts chapter se- or in Exodus chapter 7, we see that, that Egypt will not let the people of Israel go. He, he loves the, 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 the very cheap slave labor he has going on. And, and he wants to keep them as slaves. And, 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 and Moses is called by God to go and stand before Pharaoh and ask that the people would be released. But they're not immediately released, and, and, and he comes back, and then there's a series of plagues that happen, tend to be, in fact. in fact, The river of blood in chapter 7, and then, and then the frogs, and then the gnats, and the flies, and the plague of, uh, uh, on the livestock. And then there's, this, the heat gets turned up a little bit here. It goes to boils, and then there's, then there's, then there's hail. And then one of my favorite, I'm glad I wasn't there, was, is locusts. Now, how many of you guys, how many of you are the chief bug killer in your house? Let's see your hand. Put it up. All right. Folks, if you were the chief bug killer in your house, this plague of locusts would have kept you busy 24-7. You would not have had enough time to rest. You would be killing and stomping and jumping. You would, you would lose weight because you would be doing the dance dance revolution the whole time, killing the locusts, right? And you'd be going and, it would, and everyone would be doing it. And, and it wouldn't be any fun. There would be exhaustion. And so the locusts came. And then there was darkness. And then, and then there was the firstborn that, that were killed. Folks, God defends His holiness, and, and you go, well, that was, that was the Old Testament. Well, do you remember Acts chapter 5 with Ananias and Sapphira when they lied to the Holy Spirit? And then, of course, the book of Revelation teaches us that, that God will defend His holiness. Secondly, to demonstrate God's compassion, Ma- uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 40 through 42 says this, A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing... You can make me clean. And I like this because this, this answers the question as to why God does miracles. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And already some of you are going, there it is, a compassion. Why didn't he have compassion on me? Keep tracking with me, all right? Immediately, the, the, the leprosy left him and he was cured. Now that's the New Testament. In the Old Testament, as, as the Israelites were traveling and they were, um, uh, they were out there in the wilderness, they, they got grumbling. You know, the nation of Israel never grumbled. But they were grumbling because there wasn't, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't any water. And they're saying, Moses, give us water. And, and Mo- Moses is going, why are you fighting with me? Why quarrel with me? And stop testing God in this way. And yet God in his compassion, in Exodus chapter 17 he provided an opportunity for Moses to stand before the people and with his staff and, and to strike the rock and water came from it so all the people could drink. That is a miracle. And then, of course, in the New Testament, going back there in, in, um, in Mark chapter 6, you know, there's this great crowd of folks that are hanging out and they're listening to every word that Jesus is saying. In verse 34, it says, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Jumping down to verse 39, it says, Then Jesus directed all of them to all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. They sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, and he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided um, he also divided the two fish among them. And they all ate and were satisfied. And then the disciples pick up all the leftovers and there is, there is baskets full of stuff that is left over after feeding some 5,000 people. That's a miracle. 
See, today, it's, this is actually one of the easiest messages in the world that I will ever preach because all I'm pulling out for you is biblical evidence that God does the miraculous. And I know sometimes our life make us, makes us think that we're all alone and that there's no hope or there's no way that we can get out of this situation. And I'm telling you today that God is still the God of miracles. And your situation, not only does, he, does it matter to him, but he's got a purpose for where you are today. And that purpose, as you move in obedience, brings incredible glory to what wants to be done. You know, one of the other reasons that God does miracles is to declare the truth and build faith In God. Um, I'm going to jump down to, uh, again, where Moses, uh, in Exodus chapter 4, is kind of, well, he's saying this to God. What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, and this is in the calling of Moses, to be the leader and to go stand before not only the people of Israel, but eventually to stand before Pharaoh. And what if they say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, oh, I love this. What? is in your hand. A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. And Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he did what I would do. He ran away from it. Now folks, any, anyone else kind of have a phobia of snakes like I do? I'm just, yeah. So can you imagine? Throw the thing down and it gets all slithery and does all this on the ground, right? It turns into a snake. And then I love what the Lord says, Nick, reach out and take it by the tail. Well, at least he didn't ask me to grab it by its neck, right? But folks, how many times, if this is me, I'm like, ah, mm, no. Uh, ah, uh. Because, you know, it's moving a little bit. You reach down, it moves, and you jump back. But eventually he grabs it by the tail and it turns back into a staff. And he's got to think, cool trick, right? Yeah, that's really cool. And I got to know, or I got to think that if I'm Moses and I just did that, I'm going, boonk. I want to see it happen again and again and again. I bet he does it half a dozen times just to make sure it really works. And it does work because then he later goes and before Pharaoh, and he does this thing, and before the nation of Israel, they see him as the man that God has called for that moment to lead them out of, the, out of slavery and out of bondage and move them towards the promised land. There was also another ongoing miracle that happened in that journey. Out of Exodus 13, by day the Lord went ahead of them in the pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night a pillar of fire uh, 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 fired to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. In other words, God was their GPS. How many of your GPSs don't always get you to the right place? My GPS speaks with an Australian accent. I programmed it that way just for fun. Should see the time she has with all the streets in this town. She butchers San Jacinto every single time. Folks, God was leading them by day, leading them by night, making sure they were on the right path. That is the miraculous. And then even in that grief share video, we see that Jesus tipped his hand in regards to displaying God's glory and and out of John chapter 11. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I was glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Man, you and I serve an amazing God. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes that's lost on us because of that which we're experiencing in the moment that seems to have distracted us or has us thinking a million other directions. I want to tell you today that God is up to something powerful and significant and it's going on around you and it's time to tap in. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about next week. How to receive a miracle from the Holy Spirit. How does that work? How do, how do we prepare our life? How do we get into place? And it's, it's not necessarily rocket science per se, but it's a great reminder. I just didn't have time to do it all today. Further, why does God do miracles? Because he does it to display his power and glory. Psalm 145, verse 3 through 7 says this, Great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another, 
they will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of your power, of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Folks, I love when God displays his power. Now, sometimes we say it like this, God showed up and showed off, and sometimes that's what we say. And you know what? There are times, scripturally, where that does happen. There are times where God's power absolutely must come through. And I think about uh, the prophet Elijah with a J, for all those of you who always get them wrong, which one is who, right? Elisha or Elijah, but Elijah with the J. And he is, um, he is in an epic confrontation with the prophets of Baal. And they've got this little deal going on. Whose God can, can consume the sacrifice? And Elijah lets them go first, and he lets them dance, he lets them sing, he he lets them chant, he lets them pray and do all this stuff to their God. And when he doesn't answer, Elijah does, I I really like Elijah for this, he just gets a little bit sassy with him. I really like that. He just gets a little bit, there's a little bit of sarcasm, and there's a little bit of poking at it. And then he ups the ante by throwing water and more water and more water yet onto that which is supposed to be consumed by fire. That is the the test that fire is going to fall from heaven. And out of verse 7, out of 1 Kings 18, or uh, verse 37, it says this, Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you are turning their backs, or turning their hearts back again. And that's when fire fell and consumed the altar. That is miraculous. That is an amazing thing. And folks, in our own lives, a miracle is necessary. And that miracle, again, we talked about the greatest miracle in the world is that coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But sometimes the will of God is only activated in our lives because of a miracle. Do you know what? The, the, the nation of Israel never would have left Egypt unless there had been a series of miracles. It wasn't just Pharaoh that was hard-hearted. You had a nation that was hard-headed. And they were willing to stay. And often, folks, this is what happens. They were willing to, to live in less than what had God called them to. And sometimes as believers, we live well below where God has called us. We do not live in his, in, 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 in his prospering. We do not live in His purpose. We do not live even in His victory. Instead, we accept this thing as somehow that this is God's divine punishment for us and nothing is ever going to change. But in this moment, that God orchestrated a series of miracles that woke them up to see that the promised land was still in their future. And that promised land was, and it was not only in those plagues that woke up Pharaoh to let them go, but it also ignited the minds and the hearts and the spirit of those of the nation of Israel so that they would move forward. And the nation of Israel was established through a series of miracles. The Jordan River uh, 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 drying up and, and the evil occupants of, of the land that when, when, when Israel was obedient, they, they were able to, to clear those areas. And when Israel wasn't obedient, there was always a, uh, a coming together that was not necessarily God's plan. Then there's that whole battle of Jericho thing, and I'm not a military strategist by any means, but I don't think if we walked around this building seven times today, and we blew trumpets, and we screamed, and we shouted, and all that stuff, that the walls would come down. We would terrify a neighbor or two, but the walls certainly wouldn't come down. So it was a miracle. So that which was established for Israel was miraculous. And folks, what was established for you by Christ is also miraculous. He died on a cross so that you and I could know Him because He would rise on the third day so that you and I may have life. That is a miracle. And had the miracle of the resurrection not taken place, I'm not sure what we'd be doing here today. Maybe we'd be showing the closing ceremonies of the Olympics on the big screen today because there would be no purpose to worship a dead God. But he is not dead. He is alive today. And because he is alive, that miracle has produced life, eternal life in you and in me. And really, this was the preaching of the early church. 
The preaching in the early church always spoke to the risen Savior. They did not have an argument unless they believed that Christ had risen from the dead. Now, folks, there will be some things that happen in our lives, only happen in our lives because of miracles. People have asked me every now and again, you ever see a miracle? Yeah, quite a few, actually. Have you ever seen something that you wondered if it was a miracle? Oh, sure, absolutely. So have you really seen the real thing? I've seen the real thing. I've seen it happen in my own family. I've seen a miraculous uh, a healing of health in my own family that goes back many, many years ago. And yet, in my body today, I carry type 2 diabetes. I carry a disease in my body every single day. Why doesn't God heal that? So he healed someone in my family. I guess he doesn't want me eating too much cheesecake. I don't know. No, I do know. I absolutely believe that some things will only happen by the miraculous hand of God. I also believe that you and I were called to be good stewards, called to be obedient, called to uh, bring glory to Christ in all things, and I believe in a very strong work, work ethic. And I strongly believe that even when all that happens, sometimes a miracle must happen. But folks, for many years, when I, and I've told you this, so I won't spend a long time on it, but for many years I prayed, God, please take this from me. And then about five, six years ago, it kind of dawned on me. He gave me diabetes as a gift. It's a gift in my life today because what diabetes has done in my life has made me so much more disciplined than I've ever been in my whole life. Not only do I eat better, but I actually exercise. That's a new idea for me, right? And I do other things. My, my time in the Lord is that much better because as discipline has come into my life, I'm better able to be with the Lord and be patient and be quiet and everything else. And so I no longer say, God, you have to take this from me, but I actually thank him for the thorn that is my thorn in the flesh that he uses to mature me and grow me. So sometimes things stay in our lives. Things don't happen just the way we want it because they are there to grow us and move us forward and to see the grace of God in it so that you and I can grow and be that testimony of His grace and glory in a powerful way. And sure, I would love cheesecake today. With some Casey Masterpiece chips on the side, I would love that. But that's not what it's all about. It's what I've learned, what he is shaping, what he is forming in my life. Some time ago, there was, an, there was a young couple that was, started attending the church, and they were very new to the Lord, and they came to us because they needed a miracle. They needed a miracle in their family. They had been praying for a baby. And uh, they prayed and prayed, and there was a very significant test that was coming up. And what I can share is this, that when it did not happen as they hoped, they not only left church, but they walked away from their early faith. Folks, some would say, well, then why didn't God in that moment do something? Why didn't he give them a baby? And, and then they would be believers today. Well, I believe that story is not yet done. I don't believe God is finished with them by any means. But what I do understand is that sometimes we just, we always want an answer the way we want it. And when we don't, I've also learned that I don't take my ball and go home. That I need to understand and ask God the question, God, why then is this going on? What is going on in my life? How am I to move forward? How am I supposed to work through the disappointment? How am I supposed to work through my pain? How am I supposed to work through the stuff that I'm feeling in my life? What do I do? And that's where the maturity and the understanding comes as we move forward in our lives. And as we talk about receiving a miracle from the, from the Holy Spirit, I, I, I want to encourage you today that even this week that you would begin to pray and that you would ask God to elevate your faith. That you would begin to recognize that, that His way is always the best. Now, I know we get disappointed. I know it. I know it. If I took a poll in this room, I bet every one of us at some time or another have been disappointed with God. Right? Sure. 
But folks, if God gave you everything you asked for, come on, wait a second, just track with me for a minute. Always getting what we ask for from God does not indicate a miracle. But it shows us that God does not love us. Do you hear that? If God gave us everything, that's not a loving Heavenly Father who knows every good gift that you and I need in our lives. You see, folks, we just sometimes, because of the situation, because sometimes the confusion and the hurt and the pain that we're experiencing in our life, we sometimes equate God not doing it our way as His failure, when in truth, we need to see it as his wisdom. That he has something of grace filled for us that he wants us to move towards. You see, it is that hope that we have in Christ Jesus today. Now, that is maybe heavy for people to handle and swallow, but I am a, I'm a testimony of that being true. And I believe many of you are that way as well. So as we... We wrap this up today and we're thinking ahead because, again, this is a two-part message. We'll talk about receiving a miracle next week. Here's what I really want to just emphasize with you here in closing. It's this. You and I are to honor God. We support and we love others. And that which we hear is impossible is not impossible for God. Sometimes we... Someone, someone comes and it could be like that couple that, that was absolutely wanting to have a child. You know what? It was absolutely right for people to gather around with them and honestly seek and believe in faith and pray in faith that God would answer that that way. Sometimes we're afraid to pray. We're afraid because we hear, we go, the need's great, we go... You got something easier? Like, how about I pray about a, a, a hangnail in your life? Can we pray about a hangnail? I, I think God can hang. We're afraid to pray. But I got to tell you that we can't be afraid to pray. We need to pray in faith and know that God is able. And God does what God is going to do. And so you, you move in expectancy. You see the opportunity for what it is. And you begin to petition God. And that's what the body of Christ does for each other. We come alongside. We love and we pray. And we pray in expectant faith. And i got to tell you, it all starts and ends in His plan. Can you be confident about God's plan for your life? Okay, you're saying yes. Will you be just as confident tomorrow when the boss walks in and says, you know what, your job's kind of redundant and you're the newest one in, so pack your stuff, you can go home today. Will you still believe in God's plan tomorrow if that was to happen to you? Would you still believe in God's plan if, if you got news of someone being very ill in your family? You see, folks, the evil one is that prowling lion that seeks to kill and destroy, and yet our God is greater than all those things, and He has called us to live in faith, and He's called us to stand up against those things and see what God is plan and His purpose is in those situations. And I know we can say yes, yes, yes in this moment right here, but sometimes it, tomorrow or the next day it's, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure. When the locusts keep coming and coming, and coming and you're tired of dancing on their heads and, and all that kind of stuff and they've worn you down and they continue to come. Can we believe that God is still good and that He knows how to give good gifts to His children? Go ahead and take out your connection card with me and if, if you're our guest today, I want to say thank you for, for being here. We hope that Bobby will bring enough Egg McMuffins for all of you next week. That would be really great. That's about 700 so save some money. And um, I don't think there will be Egg McMuffins for you all next week, but there will be a connection card, and there will be a church, and we'll be taking the second part of this message. But if you're our guest, if you take a moment, please, to fill out the front side of that card, if you would. And, um, and if you'd let us know if this is your first or second time, that helps us. Or if you're just 
updating your information as maybe you're someone that attends here regularly, uh, would you please let us know there on the front side? I want to encourage you to, to look over onto the back and go to the right side of the card first and send me info about. Maybe you want to know more about the college group that's uh, doing a really neat job and they're meeting at a Starbucks here at 9 o'clock and, and, and Kaylee's back here and she's kind of the driving force in that and, and if you've got information and want to know more about that, you can knock that off or you can see her. And um, of course, we're talking about Grief Share. You can sign up. You can see Leo and Melody today out in the gazebo. There are places for volunteers here. We have need in ushers. We have need in security. We always have need with children, and uh, there are just needs. And so if, if you've been waiting a long time but don't know where to serve but you want to volunteer, check that off, and we'll help you find a great place to, to serve here at the church. And then we've got a Bible wrapping party for our kids coming up in about 10 days. And if you'd like to be involved with that, you mark that off, and we'll send you some more information. Now, your next step. you got a memory verse. would encourage you to, to memorize that this week. Also, in your extra reading, here's a challenge. I'd like you to, to do a topical search on miracles in the Bible. That will keep your devotional time very busy this week. You will have more reading than maybe time, but that's okay. But what I want you to see is that God does miracles. And when you read through the Old Testament and the New Testament, there is an expanse of time that is very great. And he's doing miracles and our time from the New Testament to now is less than that. So why wouldn't God be doing miracles today? It's not like they all dried up or he used it all. He is still very capable. I'd like you to do that topical search and here's three things for you to consider. Choose to believe that with God all things are possible. I didn't even get to that scripture today, right? Number two, see his miracle hand all around you. Oh, that is one of my favorites. Go stand in an orchard today. Breathe it in. And as you breathe it in, thank God. Go, God, this is amazing. Or when you watch the sunset this evening, thank Him for another day that you had breath and life and the opportunity to give glory to Him. And finally, remember, and this we're setting you up for next week, miracles serve his purpose. His purpose. Does it bless you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the fact that I know Christ today and my, 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 my future home is, is secure, that blesses me pretty good. All right? But, miracles always serve his purpose. He's got a purpose for each and every one. And sometimes it's just simply, I love you. And it's time. And other times it's more complicated and greater than that. But it's still His purpose. As you prepare that card, if you're at the end of the aisle, if you'd reach down and grab your, your, uh, your bucket, we are going to receive these connection cards. I want to thank you for writing out so many of your prayer requests. You know, we pray over these every week. And I, 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 I just love when I walk in on a, uh, either on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning and I see... People are already filling out their prayer, their prayer requests on the, on the connection card as we walk in. We take those very seriously. We pray about each and every one. God bless you. Thank you for doing that. But as those are being passed, I'm going to invite you to stand. And I want you to sing with us in, in conclusion this morning. And after this song, I'm going to come back. I'm going to invite you for prayer. But I want you to begin even now to elevate faith. And begin to believe that with God, all things are possible. Let's sing it together. God bless you. I want to be close, close to your side. So heaven is real, so heaven is real. Death is a lie, death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above. Sing it as one. Let's sing as one. Hallelujah. Lift your voices. Holy, holy. Praise you, God. God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy. He is worthy, none beside thee. God Almighty, 
the great I am. I want to be near. I want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world, but hating the dark. I want to see dry bones living again singing as one come on church hallelujah holy And shake before him. Amen. The demons Amen. run and flee. <laughs> At the mention of the name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell, nor any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. The great.
Lord, you're also there when things are going tough. So God, I pray today that we would live in expected faith. I'm going to invite my prayer friends to, to join us here. And, and we know that you come with needs each and every week. Some uh, are almost unspeakable in many ways. They're, they're so heavy on your heart and your life. It's an honor for us to have that opportunity to pray with you, to extend faith. Maybe your faith has grown tired, just weary. So we're, we're honored to do that. And you heard me talk about the greatest miracle that, that exists. And that miracle is to invite Christ into your life. That, that, that move beyond even what we were destined to be. And it's available to all who will call on the name of the Lord today and they will be saved. Is there anyone in this house today, in this, this place, that would like to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior to say, I call on his name today. Is that you? God bless you. Is there anybody else this morning? Somebody else? Christelle, thank you, sweetie. Is there anybody else in the house today that are ready to call on the name of the Lord? Anybody else in this place today? Well, praise the Lord. Awesome. We have the opportunity to pray here in just a moment. Folks, we are going to dismiss. We're going to sing a little bit, but you are free to go in just a moment. Give me time to get out there, right? Would you? Don't block the aisle for me. I'm going to run. So give me 30 seconds. I need five seconds. That's all I need. But if you're coming this way, I would encourage you to come for prayer. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. Great Bible study with John. It's phenomenal. You need to be out here. It's foundational. And get your grief share information, everything else, out in the lobby today. God bless you.